Okay, so let's just consider an experiment. I've, I have showed you this, and I will show you this again. Okay, If we take visible light, shine it on a couple slits, the waves spread out from this, right? And it acts like two sources, just like when we had the two speakers in our room and we heard bright or loud and soft and loud and soft. We had an interference pattern. Light will make an interference pattern um, on the screen. You'll get bright spot, dark spot, bright spot, dark spot, right? Okay. This is an interference pattern. This is a wave phenomenon, right? Let's do the same thing with uh, electrons. Remember, electrons can have um, a wavelength, a de Broglie wavelength, right? So we take electrons and we speed them all up to the, exactly the same velocity. So they all have the same wavelength, which is what you need to set up a, an, inter an interference pattern, right? Okay. And if you do that with electrons and you just see where they maybe put photographic film there, right? At first, you don't notice anything, but if you let enough electrons go over, you know, and this could be over a long period of time, you eventually see a place where many electrons hit, few electrons, many, few, many. You get exactly the same thing. You can make electrons interfere with each other. And even more puzzlingly, if you sent them one at a time at exactly the same speed, separated by a year, they would make this pattern. Right? They would follow this unpredictable pattern. It's like they would come in and they would hit somewhere on here. Okay, um, And this is just one of the more bizarre things. Right? How can they do that? How can they interfere? I, I would understand if we sent them all together, maybe they could communicate with each other and say, okay, you guys hit here and I'll hit there. Remember, we have to interfere with each other. right? But one at a time, they can do that. Okay, And this is, you know, the, the hair... Uh, on, on your arms should be standing up. This is a very bizarre thing that these particles one at a time can do that, right? Okay, well, you can, there's a, something called the, the Schrodinger wave equation, right? And uh, if you do, if you apply this, this uh, psi squared, if you calculate what psi squared is, right? Okay, you actually get this probability of it, right? So you describe the electron as a wave function, and then you apply this, this psi squared to it, and you get a probability and the way it works out is that, that an electron coming in has a particular probability of landing here. And here it's pretty high. Here it's low. Here it's high. Here it's low. Now, that's a bizarre thing. How do electrons interfere with each other? Well, they interfere because you can describe them as a probability wave. Well, that's strange, right? So this, this probabilistic idea that, that electrons will come in here and there's a certain probability, a very high probability that they'll end there, low that they will end there, high that they will end there. This interpretation is called the Copenhagen interpretation. Copenhagen is where uh, Niels Bohr um, lived, so it's named after him. So yeah, you can't think of baseballs flying through the air anymore. You, electrons are these very strange things that act in ways that aren't familiar to us. They're not, they're not uh, macroscopic things.